اوكي؟ اوكي. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Uh, how are you everybody? This is a lecture which we delivered last week in, in, in Arabic. They are doing it in English. Every week we'll try to make Thursday and Friday. Thursday will be in Arabic after 6 o'clock. And Friday will be in English for the time difference for the zones that we are trying to cover. Today we are talking about the foundation of ethics, not the ethics themselves. Everybody knows the ethics themselves. We are talk, trying to talk deeper down into the process of the foundation of ethics itself. I was invited to go to attend a meeting or a workshop, intensive workshop in Brussels about two, three weeks ago, organized by European Union, organized by Georgia University and uh, British Council in USA and said the party. And on the way back, on the way to, no, not on the way back, on the way to Brussels, when we took the train between London and Brussels, I had one of my colleagues. His name is Jangir Malik. Jangir Malik is a very strong humanitarian. He started his career with Islamic Relief at late, nine, late 80s. And he went to America in 1993 and stayed in the States for about seven years to establish Islamic Relief office there. He became the CEO of Islamic Relief USA. Then he came back to be the CEO of Islamic Relief UK, then the CEO of International Inspiration. Then now he is the CEO of Muslim Aid. With this long history of more than 20 years of humanitarian work, we start talking about ethics. Why we start talking about ethics in the train to Brussels? Because recently we found a plethora of humanitarian organizations from the diaspora community in the UK, from different countries, not only that, but you found that the performance and the behavior of the founders who are affected by the founder syndrome and the chairman who do not want to let go of the organizations as well as the trustees and the bad behavior of some uh, employees. So, this is I draw this tree, I did not want to bring a, a Photoshop tree from Google or from any website. This tree represents me and you, an individual. There's roots, and the tree, and there are fruits. The roots is where we get our values from. She is the foundation of our values. If these truths are not very well nourished, it will never become or bear the fruits. Okay? So here is the way we have been brought up at home, at our community. And this is the outcome of our upbringing in the community, which is our manners or our ethical values. Can I have the second one, please? Okay. So each one of us is like this fruitful tree. Most of you know what's written here in this diagram. The ones in the red are a lot of problems that are affecting us from ignorance, which is because ignorance is the mother of all problems. Poverty, diseases, extremism, radicalism, 
isolation, terrorism, armed conflicts, uh, illegal migration, desertification, droughts, extra, extra, and more, and more. HIV, AIDS, malaria, TB is coming back, tuberculosis, and many, many, many problems affecting any community because now we are living in a global village. And I believe that each and one of you more know more than these problems. But the climate we are living in or at is governed by three basic fundamental parameters. Top one is the security environment and philosophy of security thinking surrounding all of us everything is based on security second some of the states or most of the states become like intelligence state the security intelligence and the last and not least which is most dangerous is the open-ended source of information. Anyone can write anything about you, whether it's good or bad. Become a source of governance of this kind of world that we are living in. Open-ended sources. Once upon a time, I was stopped at an airport, and the security officer told me, Sir, I have this written about you on such a website. I said, but it's not that. I've never done this. He told me, I trust you. But the open-ended sources, which is the internet, is throwing a lot of lies which could affect the individual's life, credibility, integrity open-ended sources the last one was not this as well the think tanks too many think tanks we do not know who is behind them who organizing them and who is funding them and who are the pillars of its structures and those think tanks are classifying people different classification and nobody knows why or how or where or by whom this is the world that we are living in a world full of, full of problems and more but governed by these four parameters security intelligence open-ended sources and the think tank can I have the second slide, please? If we talk, if we talk about ethics, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about ethics, I'm talking about the foundation of ethics. You might look at all this, which is good, but I'm starting with this, which is more important. This is where we have our upbringing to start with, which is extremely important. For any one of us to look at this first before we go and examine all the other principles or foundations of ethics and ethical values. First and, at, and most is the family. The family is the bedrock of any ethic in the heart of the individual. No matter who is he or she was religious individual or non-religious individual or atheist male or female from the south from the north from the east or from the most of the universe that's why i invite and advise the youth when they get married either male or female they have to look at their partners the future husband and the future wife not the one who can make the chemistry clicks, but the one who can
can have the ability to carry the responsibility of building a family. A family is not a husband and wife only, but a family with the extended family of the wife as well as of the husband. The second one, which is laying the foundation of ethics in the heart of the young, is the school. What kind of school? What kind of madrasa? What kind of kindergarten? What kind of gutiya or what you call it in, uh, in the khalawi uh, uh, or kutab, uh, which is the preschool era, you are sending your children to? What time of, what time of language and the culture in the school that, that your children are educated or are having from the teacher? It's very important. Coming back to the family, now it's a trend, especially in Middle Eastern countries, wealthy countries, and even in other countries, they have uh, what do you call it, homemade, I, mean, uh, I don't like to call them servants, but we call them uh, house, uh, housekeeper. Huh? Housekeeper. Housekeeper, or sometimes we call it them butler, sometimes we call them names. And for the inferiority complex to the Arabic language, they bring somebody who does not speak Arabic to teach their children English. See so how inferior the parents to their culture, to their history, to their language. And they leave the children at the very early ages with those uh, uh, house. Uh, managers or keeper to look after the children. So the family is number one, school is number two, religious institution. What our children or myself is learning in a mosque or in a church or in a synagogue or in a temple, what we are learning as children? The language, the culture, the way of respecting the citizenship of the citizen, the way of spreading hatred or peace and love in our religious institution, the quality of our priest, imam, or preacher in the other places. So the religious institution, they are actually the third and most important place which is laying down the foundation of ethics in the heart and the mind of our children from the very early ages, till we die. Because we go to them every Saturday and Sunday in the church, every Saturday in the synagogue, every Friday for Jum'ah prayer in the mosque, and every day in the mosque as well. This is number one. Number three. Number four, the media. Whether the media is showing the truth, whether the media is independent enough and transparent, whether the media is controlled by the state or by the businessman who owns the media, or what? And this will shape up, lay down the foundation of ethics in our, the minds and the hearts of our children. Number five, which is most important, the greater community, our society, the surrounding, the people around your children, the city, the village, the street, the area, the avenue, and so on. So before talking about the ethics and the ethical value, the big talk, the big fat talk show, we talk about this, and we can decide as individuals, whom we marry, what school we send our children to, this institution that we can actually let our children to get educated in, the media might not have a control in it, but also which society we are living in. This is to be clear for myself before I start talking about these big fat talks. Going from there, also other pillars to lay down the foundation of ethics is the faith. The faith, the belief of the individuals. 
what is my what is my belief leading me to reconciliation love care communication bridge building and community building and state building no faith on earth can teach their follower hatred killing murdering backbiting because this is not a, a religious education and this is not a moral value by any reformer or any prophet or any messenger of God my intention which is actually inside nobody knows my intention Nobody knows my faith because I'm not going to write on my face that I'm a Muslim or I'm a Christian or I'm a Hindu or I'm no. I'm not going to say that my intention is to go and do X and do Z. No, it comes in the reflection of the act that I am doing. The second foundation after the five there is the intention. Why I'm doing this work for? Because working in public space and humanitarian space is extremely important. This is the title of the talk, which I forgot to mention it at the very beginning. Humanitarian space is a part of the public space. Humanitarian space has its own ethics, values, terms of references, and so on. And public space will be more wider because it includes the politics, political, social, economical, educational, and everything. It's more inclusive. So whoever decides to work in humanitarian space or in public space, he or she have to understand and know that they are a part of the public trust. Asbahu milkiya amma. Owned by the society. Watched by everybody and everybody and anybody has the right to question them because they are in the public sphere. Once upon a time, we had some teacher this is about 25 years ago, came to us from a country from Egypt. And he was giving us an advice. I was about a very old man, giving a lecture in one of the mosques. And this advice was, all my sons and my daughters, whenever you stand up on the stage, Remember and believe that everybody in the room or in the hall is not only listening to you by the ears, but listening to you by the eyes. They look at your body language. They look at your code of dress. Then you look at your family at home. You look at your children. You look at your wife. You look at your performance. It is not just a very nice speech to give and everybody say an excellent no people observe you because you become in the public sphere and you become accountable to any and everybody in the society no matter how their status is high or low in the society coming back to the foundation we talked about the five Family, school, religious institution, media, society, faith, intention, patience should be a part of my endure foundation. And this is one of the bedrock of the characters of all the prophets came to save humanity. Patience. Patience is unquestionable. Unquestionable. You have to be patient till you get the result of your action of your planning, of your performance, of your exam. Patience is there as a bedrock of the foundation of the ethics, 
inside the hearts and mind of the individual. Don't show humility, but be humble. Be humble. This comes also from these foundations. Humility. Humility is not an action. But somebody stands on a stage and saying, oh, <laughs> and cry. We can get any actor and actresses to do that. Because people will not, act, will not buy this. Because those people who are humble and act in humility, their words will not be heard by your ears. Their action will not be seen only by your eyes, but the words and the action will go through our hearts and stay there. And that's why you can see the difference between somebody who trying to act in a human, in, in, in becoming an actor as a humble man or a humble woman, trying to act humility, or some people who are really humble. Honesty is not, is not questionable. It's not something I'm going to train somebody. Can I train any one of you to become honest? No. Honesty comes from here. And comes from here. Where the mother and the father tell the child, don't do it. It's wrong. Don't lie. Don't cheat. Comes from here. Comes from here comes from before the man marries the woman or the husband marries the wife. Accountability, as I, I mentioned before, all these are actually the foundation. Because once you are working in the public sphere, huh, which the part of it is humanitarian sphere, you have to be accountable to whom? To the poor people that you are trying to serve to the decision makers around you to the community as a whole to the donors who are giving you the money to the employees whom you are managing or you are managed by them to the state that you are employed by it to the law of the country and to God who is the most and at most and the top of all of this because we know that Allah God has made angels to observe us 24 7 every second every minute every day every week every, 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 and we have all our records there this is the accountability Worship Allah, worship God, as if you see Him. But if you don't see Him, He definitely sees you. This is accountability. And any one of this, I mentioned, a poor man on the street can stop a minister, has the right, not only can, has the right to stop a minister or president or a king or a queen or a Amir, or a prince, whatever it is, and tell him, this is my right on you. Because I'm a citizen of this country, and you claim to govern me. You claim to speak about me. From the people who are dismarginalized, or sorry, who are from the people who are marginalized, to all this, you are accountable to each and every one of them. Marga'iya, referential, you have to have a reference in your life. Whom you refer you to? You refer yourself to the constitution of the country, to the constitution of the organization and the bylaw, the constitution of the company, okay, or to the religion, that's the Quran, to the Bible, to the Torah, to any holy book, or 
to the theology of your leader in your group or your political party, you have to have a point of reference. Okay. You have before, look about your moral behavior later on. You cannot live in this public a sphere before having those points embedded in your heart before you claim to become an activist, humanitarian worker, or public worker. Because all those people who stand under the light have to be accountable to every and any individual in the society. No matter what their status is, what their wealth is, because without us as people, they have no value, they have no existence, they have no government, they have no country. Also, before we talk about this, what knowledge you have and the experience as a society? Huh? So, specialized knowledge and the experience. We have to have a knowledge and the experience. It's not just like some, quite often I see the talk show nowadays, somebody sitting, I, I talk about those talk shows stays for about two, three, four hours, giving us very nice headache every night, everywhere. And like somebody sitting in a room, looking at himself or herself in a mirror and vomiting at us. Saying what? We don't know what he's saying or know what he's saying. So here is not a talk show. Public sphere is not a talk show. Public sphere is a knowledge and the experience. A knowledge-based solution, experience-based solution, not a talk show. So if we claim this, we have to have this inside our hearts. But only your only experience in a sector or in, in, a, in a speciality, but the, the society that you are living in. The such that you are going to serve. Suppose now we are going to work in a place called Somalia, a country called Somalia. Somalia has got many tribes, as many tribes as you want. Then you went to Makadishu, or you went to Somaliland, Hergisa, or you went to Pontland, Garabi, or any other place. Or you went to Yemen, to Taiz, Sana'a, Hodayida, and then and ties, uh, are, Shami, uh, are you Shamiri or are you whatever it is, or, you to Eb, or to Syria, or any part. Before going there, you have to have the knowledge of the society, the culture of the people, the moral value of the people, the faith of the people, the composition of the society, male, female, old, young, so on and so on. The history of the area. Not just going there because it's a job. No. And here you can control huh, yourself according to their values. So you can adjust yourself toward their ethical values. Because you have this knowledge inside your heart. And Akhzab al Asbab, you have to be putting the foundation of reasoning on the table all the time. Maybe once you do something like this and it gave you a very great success without any planning, but this will never work all the time. Sometimes it will work, but most of the time it will not work. Sometimes it will get you a lot of reward and profits, and most of the time it might destroy the organization or your credibility inside that country or that society that you are trying to serve. Reasoning is very important. Your interest has to be public interest. Your interest has to be a humanitarian interest. Not your personal interest. Not your personal desire. Not my personal desire. Not my personal interest. Public interest. As I'm saying here, because I am standing at the hot spot, claiming that I represent those people in my constituency. They want water, they want education, they want health projects. 
They want employment. They want jobs. They want factories. They want, they want, they want. And I claim that I'm one of the people who are actually living on the verge or the, uh, or the edge of the community. On five pounds a day, or ten pounds a day, twenty pounds a day. When they come to my house, they find that I'm living in a mansion. Public interest here should be my cornerstone. This will lay down the foundation of our my ethical value. Always remind myself of the public interest. Always remind myself of the poor. Always reminding myself on the, of the sick, of the displaced, of the refugees, of the homeless, of, of all those people in the public space or the public sphere in the humanitarian movement or the social movement. But I'm trying to claim that I'm a member of all of them. Profiteering is a very important. It's not also, and as I said earlier, it is not something like uh, I make a workshop for you. No, it is something comes from here. Do we make business with the dreams, aspiration, agony, pain of the people? Do we make money out of it for ourselves? Or we are investing our time, our effort, our money, our thoughts, our life in maximizing the profit from our work to reach those people that we claim that were standing under the hotspot to defend themselves. Profiteering, the people who will teach you that are here. When I am a young kid, in the school, at home, in the mosque or the church, uh, in the television or the talk show, individuals who are actually trying to say something uh, on the television or the social media. Neutrality. What by neutrality? Hiyadiyya. Whenever you are in a conflict zone, whether internal in the country or external, cross-border, my personal affiliation has nothing to do with my work. Because I like this party or fighting this party. This has nothing to do. Should not be put on the public sphere on the national level, should not be put in the humanitarian sphere, in a conflict zone between countries. Because you are serving the victims on both sides. You are serving the victims that actually are not from your religion, are not from your culture, are not from your race, or belong to your race. They are actually serving anybody and everybody. And this is a neutrality of being a character that's working in these conflict zones. Quite often people, especially in the conflict zone, cannot maintain it. And they try to say, let us make it impartiality, not neutrality. But at the end of the day, for us in the public sphere, on the material sphere, we have to be neutral. Not because I belong to this school of thought, and my member of the school of thought have an argument with those people, or let us, through my authority, take the right away. Never, ever to be a foundation of ethics. Transparency. Whoever stands on the humanitarian platform in a public sphere must be seen inside out. His lifestyle, his income or her income, his or her speeches, performance, because transparency here, as once upon a time happened, 
that one of the great caliphs uh, of Islam, his name was Umar, was standing in the mosque and uh, making a speech. And he was wearing a long dress, which was made of two dresses. One of the people who were in the mosque told them, Sir, each one of us has got one dress. How did you get two dresses? So this man in the mosque, or in the church, or in the synagogue, or in any public sphere, has the right to question the president, the prime minister, publicly, without being afraid of being punished. So, the president at that time has to go to his son. Tell my son, Abdullah, stand up and tell people. He told everyone in the mosque that because my father is very tall, I have to give him my dress so he can join both of them together to be able to have one long dress. Here is transparency and here is accountability as well. Transparency because the leader cannot hide. Accountability because where any and everyone in the public sphere can stop you and question you without being afraid to question you. Because he is protected by the justice of the society and the law of the society and the ethical value of the society and the leadership. Transparency and uh, accountability. Your appearance is very important. The way you look, the way you dress, your car, your motorbike, the way your family dressed, especially when you go to visit poor people. This was a reminder from Omar, from Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu, Ali. He was telling us, don't hurt the poor people. When you visit them, by what? Not by swearing at them, not by looking down by them, at them, but by wearing a dress which is very elegant. While they are wearing Apache dresses, a dress made out of many patches. This helps the people. When you go to a wedding, don't wear the suit, the best of the suit you have, to be more attractive to anybody else than the husband or the groom. See? So this is the way when you mix in the public sphere, look at your appearance. Look at your... The, the, I'm not saying not to wear clean and decent clothes. No, wear them, but not expensive ones. Not the accessories that our sisters are wearing. I mentioned this in the Arabic talk uh, a week ago, but we were sitting down on the Nile one day, I can't remember, 20, 2011, 2012, with a group of youngsters, and some of them were going to Shalatin and the Halaib, and for my ignorance, for my ignorance of Egypt, I did not know where Shalatin and the Halaib. Of course, we know where it is now. It is on the Red Sea. And they're very elegant dresses, wearing them with all the accessories and hijab or no hijab or whatever it is. And uh, at the end of the meeting, discussion, I said, what kind of coat of dress you are going to wear tomorrow when you travel? Because they wanted to rush to get something at 6 or 7 o'clock in the morning to travel to this area. I said, this is our dress. I said, what? You going to this remote area with a social class which not equivalent to social class with this kind of dress, no way to do that. Go and change it and wear decent but not expensive dresses. They went and came back, I think after a week or two weeks and we met again another day. And they told me when we met, Alhamdulillah, we were 
جلابيه clean white decent dresses not very expensive we took off all the accessories and gold and jewelry wore, wore, wore actually the slipper actually in the in our shoes and we sat down on the, the ground with every and body everybody there and they were so happy with all of us this will actually don't hurt people by showing them the quality of the clothes that you are having Removing any barrier between you and them. Because you are actually talking about them. You cannot talk about them from behind bars. Cages. From behind walls. They have the access to your house. They should have the access to your office. They should have the access to you 24-7. Because you decided to become... A member of the civil workers who are working for them on a voluntary basis or on uh, uh, a paid basis and to represent them. So they should remove all the barriers. They come to your house, you go there. You should go out to them, living amongst the people. You should go out to them, you yourself. Not only when there is a disaster, but on a constant basis you are with them to understand their needs. To be with them when they need you. To be with them when they don't need you. To be with them to celebrate what they have. Because they pay you to be an MP. They pay you to be a congressman or a senate or a lord because all your salary comes from the tax they paying to the government or all the, your salary is coming from the donation that the organization is having whether it's humanitarian or development or social organization the money comes from the donors the donors have the right on you the money comes from the government uh, the money comes from the, the, from the taxation of the citizen of the country. So that anybody there has the right to ask you if you are in underneath, uh, under this, underneath this hot spot in the public sphere. The top one, which is the most important one, if we can bring it down, Abdurrahman, to be seen, independence and no politicization. This one, yeah, this one. See, independency, no matter what is your background is, this political party, or this political party, or this school of thought, or that school of thought, or this religion, or that religion, or this religious group, or that religious group, or this ethnic background, or that ethnic background, okay? Your ethnicity, your religion, your politics is good for you. But whenever you come to serve me, don't come to me with a tail end. You know the tail end? Can you see the tail end? See here? Can you see the tail end? Don't ever come to me with a tail end. Cut your tail from your tail end when you stand on the public sphere, in the public space, in the humanitarian space. Don't come and tell me the board decided on a decision, while the board did not decide, but somebody else in a dark room is deciding for yourself. Not that acceptable. Or the, the party, the political party leader decided for something. Or you became a prime minister of something else. So khalas, you have your house of common, you have your parliament, and you decide with your cabinet, not with the head of your political party, not with the head of your religious group, not with the head of your school of thought. No way. Public sphere is about any citizen in the country should be served by you through 
the Constitution. So the boundary of your service is the Constitution and the law of the country. Not the law of your political party, not the law of your religious group, not the law of anything else. Once I am here as a humanitarian worker, I do not differentiate between my enemies and my supporters when I give the aid. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran, they feed out of love the needy, the orphans, and the prisoners of war. This is the condition as a civil servant in the prison okay, to help and treat the prisoners of war in a nice way. So independence, independence, and non politicization is extremely important to go with all this. This actually, what I'm talking today about, again, to whoever tried to claim that he is going to work in the public sphere or in the empty sphere must have this foundation in him and her before starting to have the real ethical value of the manner of the humanitarian or the civil worker or the public worker. Mentioned about the family, the school, the religious institution, the media, society, and all this to be built inside her or his heart and themselves. I think I uh, finished now. I don't know how many minutes we took. Yeah, four, maybe 40 minutes. Okay, and if you have got any comment, Abdurrahman or anything, or. Okay. So maybe you can see you next week in uh, uh, Thursday. Uh, in Arabic and Friday in English. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.